I am an amateur chess player who has a keen interest in the historical aspect of the game. I am nothing but a speck of dust in a vast cosmos. These are the lines of India's 19th Grandmaster Sundarajan Kidambi. It is his birthday today. So fabulous birthday to Grandmaster Kidambi. And also thank you for sending us your best games. Uh, we also wish you a great year ahead. And dear viewers, I got a chance to interact with Grandmaster Kidambi during my Reykjavik trip. We were roommates and uh, I learned a lot of things from him. You don't really realize the time running when you talk to him. Like once you have this conversation, once you begin a conversation with him, you know, you lose uh, a sense of time. I'll now tell you briefly about Grandmaster Sundarajan Kidambi's chess journey. So he started chess sort of randomly. You know, he started playing based on a street competition. It was some Independence Day Cup organized and he did well in that particular chess event as well as the quiz event. And some of the older boys uh, saw this and took notice and they suggested Sundarajan Kidambi's parents to enroll him into a chess class because he seemed to have a good grasp about the game. So that's how he began his chess journey and uh, he has a lot of chess accomplishments and I'm going to share them now. So he feels that uh, attaining the GM title is one of his best chess accomplishments and apart from that winning events like the National Junior Championship in 1999, Badalana in 2008, Barcelona Sands Open in 2015, gold medal in the Asian in 2005 and uh, also winning La Ferre Open in 2013. I think these are some of his uh, best chess accomplishments and Knight is his favorite chess piece. And when I asked him about his favorite chess opening, he says that it's hard to uh, pinpoint one because it keeps changing. Initially, it was Karokan and later some sort of uh, an English and then later it was Dutch. But if you ask him about his uh, fascination with the openings in the childhood, then Karokan is the answer. Later, he had to drop it due to uh, boredom. And some of his favorite books are Siddhartha, and also several books of uh, M. Sen Tamilan on traditional living. He also loves the uh, autobiography of a yogi and uh, some books of Osho. And when it comes to movies, Die M for Murder, X-Men First Class and Putia Parvai and then Inception. And uh, if he had to share one life lesson, it would be this, that the next move is the most important of all. And he has many ideals like uh, when it comes to chess, it is uh, Bobby Fischer. But if you ask him uh, more favorites, then he at least has 20 names. So it's hard to uh, do justice to that question. But if it's a non-chess person, he looks up to that is uh, M. Sen Tamilan. And uh, I think that's about uh, Sundarajan Kidambi. Now let's focus on his chess aspects here. Kirambi was white against uh, Grandmaster Sasikiran and uh, this game took place in 2005. And here Grandmaster Sasikiran has just played his bishop to a6 and Kirambi found a neat way to exploit the fact that the black king is in the center. And when you have such a position, forcing moves come to mind and that is what Grandmaster Kirambi did. He first played bishop takes d7 check and after king takes d7, he played rook d1. Now the threat is very clear. There is going to be something on the D line. The knight on A4 is hanging and this is all well calculated by Grandmaster Kirambi. On H5 he was intending to go Queen F3 I think but in this game Grandmaster Sasekiran played Queen takes A4 and then came a brilliant shot with Knight takes E6. And the point is that uh, if F takes E6 which is what happened in the game there is rook takes d5 and after king c7 there is queen takes e6. If you look at the material count, black is a piece down but black's king is not safe and white was able to capitalize on that. So after rook e8, queen f7, king b8, bishop f4. Now only the rook who is yet to enter the party, all the other pieces are very active. There's also e6 in the air and after g5, b3, queen c6. He found a way to continue the attack with rook c1. Uh, so the momentum is building. And after queen d5, he played queen e8, followed by bishop e3. This position is heavily winning for white. Queen c8 is threatened, so Sasikiran tried to stop that with bishop c4, but after bc4 and queen f7, white is winning. So after this, rook d1 was the final move, and Grandmaster Kirambi won this game. 
The second game I have is his game against Amin Basim and it was a King's Indian defense and in this position after Queen F6 White has all the pieces very well placed the Rook, Queen and the Rook they're all focusing on the King side in this position after Queen F6 Kidambi played Knight G5 and the idea was that if Rook E7 he had Knight to H7 to force this Queen away from F6 if the Queen goes to D6 he had at least caught I think knight b5 but in this position his opponent played queen b6 and here we see a clearance a sacrifice Kidambi plays d6 wickets the d5 square for the knight to come and after rook e6 he played knight d5 but after d6 if let's say black takes queen d6 then white has rook d1 and let's say if the queen moves to b6 there is rook d8 and so a to follow so after d6 his opponent played rook e6 and then after knight d5 queen takes d6 he got his rook to d1 there is a deadly knight f6 check threatened and after bishop d7 he did not even do that he just played knight g5 and now queen h7 is also going to follow so after rook to g6 he applied the discovered attack with knight takes f4 he is already ahead in material and then went on to win the game after knight h5 there is another game that i want to show you it is his game against Magesh Chandran and this game happened in 2008 in Badalona. You see the move B3 and um, Kidambi played D5 in this position and after Bishop B2 he played Bishop G4. This is also a way to face uh, one B3 which is trending these days and um, it looks as if black is being very solid with his approach but in a few moves you will see Grandmaster Kidambi launching a great attack. And step one, he plants his knight on e4, prevents white's e to e4. And after knight e4, d4, that is when his uh, attraction with the Dutch defense comes handy because this is a typical Dutch kind of a situation. And also we have knight e4 ideas in the Dutch defense. After c5, bishop c7, knight c4, knight f6, f3. I think this is the critical moment. I'm going to give you a chance to ponder over black's next move. All right, I hope you have spent some time here trying to understand what black's best move is. In this position, can be played pawn to f4, which is a good move. The point is that after g takes f4, there is bishop f4 and h2 is a soft target. And after f4, if f takes e4, then black has f takes g3. Now this pawn on g3 creates havoc, as you can see. After pawn to h3, there comes a brilliant move. So I'm giving you another chance to see what you would do as black. In this position, Grandmaster Kidambi played a knight takes e4. And the point is that with this move, he opens the lines for the rook to enter the seventh rank. Also opens the queen's line to come to h4. And for a moment, it also dislodges the bishop from g2 and uh, lures the bishop to e4. So after bishop takes e4, he plays queen to h4 double attack and in this position his opponent played bishop g2 and then came bishop to g4 again an excellent move and after bishop g4 of course g 4 is met by queen h2 and uh, if white goes let's say queen d2 there is rook f2 in the game uh, magesh chandran played pawn to d5 and after rook f2 he resigned because there is an unavoidable mate with rook takes g2 that follows for instance if white plays d takes e6 there is rook g2 queen s3 queen h2 and queen h1 mate bishop s3 mate queen f2 mate and so on so that was uh, grandmaster kidami's game and the uh, interesting thing here is uh, when i was in my early teen uh, like when i was 11 12 years old i think probably 13 in that range i used to read articles of uh, grandmaster kidambi and uh, magesh chandran on chess.com so if you go to chess.com slash articles and uh, check uh, uh, articles by kidambi and magesh chandran you will see that they have written about uh, different chess topics and i was uh, introduced to these top grandmasters through their articles and it was fun to interact with them i also played uh, grandmaster kidambi in a tournament game uh, in actually more than two games I think and it was fun uh, playing and learning from uh, him and with that I would like to also wish Grandmaster Kidambi happy birthday again I am also linking another game of Kidambi where he played without castling 
uh, i'm going to put that game in the description and with that i'm going to end this note also uh, i would like to give him a shout out uh, because he also writes articles uh, you can also check his website which i will uh, he has a blog in which he writes all his articles so i will link that in the description do give that a visit read his articles you will learn a lot by reading his thoughts about different games and uh, different topics pertaining to chess all right dear viewers it's time for me to say bye bye but do like the video and uh, i'll be back again with another video until then take care and dear viewers uh, this is december 29th so this is probably the last video of know your grandmaster series for the year i wish you a great year ahead i wish you a happy new year in advance thank you very much bye, -bye.